Good morning. Good morning. Hey guys, how are we going? Some good rain out there. It's beautiful. Did you get wet? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, God is good. So faithful. And come thou fount of every blessing And tune my heart to sing thy grace And streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise For teach me some melodious song The song by flame tongues above and praise the mountain fixed upon it the mount of thy redeeming love I was lost in utter darkness till you came and rescued me and I was bound by all my sin when your love came and set me free for now my soul can sing a new song now my heart has found a home now your grace is always with me and I'll never
almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our god and almighty fortress you go before me Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. Whoa. When I fight, I fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God. Battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet. I sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I find on my knees, with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at Thank you. 
Come on, the King is alive. Hallelujah. He's the victorious one. Glory to God. He's victorious for you. Everything that stands in your way, the Lord can give it the flick. He moves, he moves, he's alive. His life is in you, his life is in me. Hallelujah. Jesus won forever. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now I want you to shout, wait a minute. I want you to shout hallelujah on behalf of somebody you know that doesn't yet know him. Yeah? And bring down a wall in their life that salvation today can be a day of salvation. Ready? Come on. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Jesus! Jesus wins! Hallelujah! Glory to God. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil, because my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you so much. God, thank you for this rain. Oh, God, thank you so much. We just, we just receive, God, all that you have for us this morning. Just drench us, Holy Spirit. Drench us wet. <laughs> Sloppy wet kiss us. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Come as as children, God. Just children coming to your feet, Father. We're welcomed. We're welcomed into your your lounge room, God. It's safe in your lounge room. <laughs> the fire is warm, God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus.
things you got I don't understand I choose to love
Your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Oh. Oh. You give.
your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's Jesus it's you Father we honor you Father you're worthy Jesus such a uh, sense of rejoicing in the Lord today and I just got Samuel uh, 1 Samuel 2 it's a thanksgiving prayer from Hannah Hannah prayed and said my heart rejoices and triumphs in the Lord my horn strength is lifted up in the Lord my mouth is open wide to speak boldly against my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation there is no one holy like the Lord there is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah.
in this place of worship, in this attitude of praise and honor and glorification of the Lord, the living God, the only Savior, the only one, the coming King, beautiful Jesus. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Jesus. Irresistible Savior, mighty one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just want to encourage you, nobody has to hide. He already knows you through and through. You can come out of hiding. You can step out into the light. You can, you can trust yourself in his presence. Thank you, Lord. And if there's somebody here that's never surrendered to the love of God, this God that we know and are worshiping and are declaring his praise this morning, if you've never surrendered to him, I just encourage you, the Lord is inviting you to step out from the shadow, step out from behind your walls, step out into his light and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I surrender. Lord, I turn from my ways and want to walk in your ways. I repent. I want to make you my Lord and my Savior. He knows you already. There's nothing to fear, nothing to fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's anybody here this morning in that place where you've never surrendered to the love of God. I just want you to pray this prayer with me right where you are. I want you to envision yourself coming out from behind. You're in the light. You're safe. He knows you through and through. He loves you absolutely. He died for you. He rose again to show you how to live and to empower you to live well and choose well. He's a good, good father. He's a good God. So if that's you, just repeat after me. Dear Lord, how I love you. I surrender my life to you. I repent of my sins. I repent of walking my own way. In other words, I... I stop and I turn and I look to you. Show me how to live. Show me how to walk. Be my Lord and Savior. I love you, Lord. Fill me now with your presence and by your spirit empower me to live well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If there's anybody in the house that needs a touch from the Lord for healing or wholeness, his presence is all that you need. He invites you to come close. Brokenness cannot live in the presence of the living God. Just receive your healing. Receive wholeness. Receive hope. Let joy rise. Strongholds come down. your breath in my lungs and I call out your praise I sing it out to you is there anybody here this morning that wants with the breath of your lung you want to come and, and praise the Lord through story through testimony you want to declare the goodness of God something that God has done for you in recent times there's a story to tell briefly of the goodness of God you want to offer a sacrifice of praise and just say how good is God anybody with a story Anybody with a testimony this morning? Yeah. Oh, come on. You can stay down there with us. Well, I came up from Warwick uh, just under two weeks ago for a holiday for a break. And um, there have been four major crises to handle in 10 days so far. And um, I just praise the Lord. He's been raising me up. I, I did get under the circumstances for a bit there. I was, think, I was thinking negatively. But the Lord has raised me up. And uh, in today's worship was just absolutely beautiful. His power is here. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Come on, Kim. I would just like to testify of God's goodness.
for my stepson Luke. So he has been on the, the prayer list quite a number of times over the years. <laughs> um, he left Cooktown. Um, he'd been working as a nurse and his contract had finished. So there he was on the move without a job and without accommodation. He got temporary accommodation in Cairns and a job. Um, but he was working as a nurse and he was very stressed in that particular environment with the current situation. And he had a heart attack and he's 39. And um, so we couldn't get up there, but he was in the hospital and he was booked in just a few days later by the doctor to have a heart operation at 7am on a Monday morning. And I'd been sending messages and then I got one back and I was thinking, I thought you were supposed to be being operated on. <laughs> and he said, um, the current test shows that it can be managed through diet and he didn't have to have the operation. <laughs> Praise God for that. And then uh, that meant because he, d he wouldn't have had a job or, you know, how was he going to recover? So that was like a double blessing. And then he managed to get a job as a service provider through the NDIS with a young man that he really likes. And it's a lot less stress and it's really the lane that I think that he sh should have been in for a long time. And so, yeah, we're just waiting to hear that he's got better permanent um, accommodation. But it's all working very well. So praise God. Yeah, well, amen. Amen. So let's just pray for Luke. And I want to I want to pray for for Tina as well this morning because she's look she needs accommodation sorted out. She needs a proper accommodation, and it's been a bit rough. Tina came this morning and was asking for a Bible, and we're able to provide you with that. Praise God! And now we're going to believe God's going to provide you a, a healthy environment. A good place in Jesus' name, and Luke as well. Yeah, so thank you, Lord, that you make you you are a father to the fatherless. You make a home for the homeless, Lord God. You surround us with your presence, and we pray for Luke and for Tina as well that each of them will find themselves precisely where you um, invite them to be, Lord. That everything that they need will be found in that place and in your presence, mighty God. We trust you for wholeness and goodness in every way and for a roof over their heads in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, amen. Anybody else? Yeah, come on. Oh. Um, so my name's Tali. Uh, my husband, Elijah, isn't here um, this morning. This is our six-week-old... Noble, her name's Noble. She's opened her eyes now. <laughs> She's going to be hungry soon. So I'll make it quick. <laughs> so we're praising God for this incredible miracle. These two ladies actually traveled to Myanmar with me a few years ago. We were in Myanmar, me and my husband, um, last year and um, came back because this little one was coming. So she basically brought us home. Um, yeah, so we got back in December. <laughs> But I just request the church to remember Myanmar. <laughs> we have a lot of friends, a lot of family <laughs> over there. <laughs> and my husband's not there here today because he's up every night trying to contact and trying to stay in touch. And, and he's broken hearted. Um, but I just want... Um, prayer for me, Emma. Uh, years ago, God gave me this picture of a, a va vase, which was Asian. It looked so Asian, and I just knew it represented me, Emma, and it was shattered. And um, at the time, I thought that was the past, what me, Emma had gone through. But I saw God smiling over this shattered vase, and I was so devastated at it. But I saw God smiling and saying, this is really good. You see, this is good because I can remake this place, this room this country, the way I want it. So I'm just praying that in this time that Myanmar would know that they need a deliverer, 
know that they need a saviour and that they would turn to God and call on the name of God to be saved. So I just pray that you guys would also just join us in prayer and remember Myanmar because it's getting worse and worse and it's so evil. Like, and the, the, the dictators or the military, they're, they're getting led by really demonic stuff. And so the more we hear about it, the more it's just uncovering how evil it's been. So I just pray um, for the people in Myanmar, for the Christians in Myanmar, and for a message to be able to go get to Myanmar to turn to God because he is the only... Because they're going to get slaughtered. (laughs) And I'd prefer them to get slaughtered for the point of salvation and eternity (laughs) than just for democracy. (laughs) So thank you and, yeah. Thanks, Tali. Just stay here. Let's pray, guys. And Father, we just agree with everything that Tully has expressed, Lord. We know that it, it resonates with your heart. And so, Father, we stand into your grace for Myanmar. Lord God, we thank you that you make the broken things whole, that there must be a falling before there comes a rising. Lord God, and thank you for that, that severe mercy that you have expressed to the country of Myanmar. And we pray, Lord, that you will leave nothing undone that can be done to shake and wake that people into your grace and into your embrace. Father, we pray for mercy. We pray for salvation. We pray for protection, lovely Lord. We pray for provision. We pray for the supernatural invasion of, your, of the gospel of your kingdom into the hearts and lives of men and women right across that country in the darkest places. Lord God, you have have already been there. You are in the darkest place, Lord. We pray that now, let now be the day when you determine it's time to reveal yourself and 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 be made visible, Lord God, in the in the lives of your people and supernatural by your Spirit. We pray, move, lovely Lord, and shake the grip of the enemy off that nation and get glory for yourself. We bless Elijah in his absence here, and we bless Noble. Lord God, for a, a great, a great assignment in your kingdom, health and wholeness in Jesus' name. Thanks, Tally. God bless you guys. Amen. Amen. Yeah, come on, Wendy. Take me home. Okay, I've got a couple of things. Um, first bit I got was my love is for all. And is a gift that is free for, with no catches, deals, or phone print attached. It is the greatest gift that I give. I'm changing the wor- way the world looks and how things are done. My way is righteous and the only way that has access to the throne of my Father God. I see the beauty in everything and everyone, from an ant to a whale shark, the queen to a homeless person, as they are all made in my image. I open the eyes, your eyes to see how I see things as my hand moves throughout the world. Nothing that is false, corrupt, is going to be able to stand against me as they will be brought out into the open for all they are to see and, what, and that they are, will become dust. Any other thing? Oh, gosh. Okay, this is when we were singing some songs, of course. Um, my children, I absolutely loved your praise and worship this morning, especially in Raise a Hallelujah, so much that it pierced the darkness and so that it had to flee like a dog with tail between its legs. <laughs> <laughs> it touched me so my heart and joy immensely that I danced along with you. And, um, hang on, sorry, we went along with you. Um, it really touched my heart beyond any measure. I am totally in your midst today. Thanks. Thanks, Wendy. Everybody say amen. Oh, hallelujah. Raise a hallelujah. Uh, yeah, bring me that, yeah. Okay, well, I was thinking the stool, but oh, bring me a stool. Yeah, thanks, Stu. It's a stool kind of day. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Yeah, it really is. You know, you can, sometimes you want to you pace and preach, and sometimes you just want to sit and share. And uh, thank you. That was pretty good alliteration, I thought, right there. You know, I mean, that, that's as much preaching as you'll get out of me today. Um, but I do want to share some things this morning. Wow. It's been, a, it's been a, in terms of preparing for the, to today, it's been actually a bit of a challenge. Um, and when, when God, when the word doesn't flow easily in preparation for a Sunday, very often it's because the Lord is saying, you're not going to need a word because I'm already going to preach it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. And, and pretty much that's already happened. And 
it's so rich, isn't it? The diet that the Lord serves up, the, 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 the table that he prepares in front of us in the presence of our enemies is more than we can hope or think. It, it's so rich. It's so wonderful. And as wonderful as this is, this ain't nothing, right, compared to what's in front of us. My word, we're going to get to that table in the presence, the real presence of Jesus. And I think for a brief second, we're going to be so undone with the comparison of what we thought was good in the world as sons and daughters of heaven compared to what we are now experiencing and seeing. We're going to be, we're going to be shocked to the core that we ever thought we had arrived in any way, shape, or form. You know, I think for, for most of us, we recognize by the grace of God, hallelujah, but we're still barely saved. We're still barely transformed. And yet that barely is enough. It's like uh, it just takes the faith of a mustard seed to move mountains. It takes, it takes that barely saved transformation in contrast to our, our previous condition, and it causes us even the barely saved amount is enough to make us go, oh, my gosh, I'm changed forever. I've been born again. I've, I've, I've started over. It's all amazing. And that's just barely saved. Wait till you are completely saved. Wait till you are fully transformed and you have a fully functioning kingdom brain. That's a scary thought. That's just an amazing thought. You never have to go, ah, oh, what was their name? Yeah. Actually, you'll probably be just so caught up with your new name that Jesus has given you, Revelation 2, carved on a white stone. You're going to be so wrapped with that. No, you're not going to care if somebody else forgets your name because Jesus knows my name, and he's given me a name that satisfies as nothing else in my previous existence ever could or could even dream of. This satisfies. Why? Because it's God speaking over me what I have become by his grace, and it's perfect and good and without blemish or spot or wrinkle, and it's right, and there's nothing lacking in it. There's nothing left undone. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. I'm going to talk about obedience today. <laughs> Way to kill the atmosphere, <laughs> Pastor. But you guys already know the, the conclusion I would ever arrive at if I took the time is one that we should probably already begin with. You know that obedience to God today is not obedience to a list of do's and don'ts. It's not a, it, in Hebrew, the, there are several words for law. One is hok, one is dat. Those are lists. Those are injunctions. Those are how you shall and how you shall not, what you shall and what you shall not. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about obedience to Torah, and the Hebrew word Torah means the ways of God, the, the heart of God, the character of God. That's why the psalmist can say, oh, how I delight in your ways. Your law is honeycomb to my lips. It's life and strength and health to my bones. It's not, it's not the list that we're celebrating. It's, it's God. It's who he is that we're celebrating. And that's why we can stand up and say, I delight in your law. I delight in your Torah. Oh, Lord, obedience to your Torah is life to me. Yeah. But nonetheless, it is obedience. It's obedience. And I think the Lord, he, he, he just wanted me to emphasize that a little bit this morning because we stand now, this morning, in a world that's gone really upside down, look, I'm not going to do the litany of how bad the world is so that my, my sermon's answer can sound that much more better, right? You know, sometimes pastors do that. They spend 40 minutes telling you how bad things are, and then they give a little, a little Christianese at the end, and we feel like, oh, good. Now I feel better. Boy, that was pretty bad there for a while, but the pastor answered the question. You know, sometimes we're a little bit silly, and the foolishness of preaching can go down that track. But this morning... I'm not going to do that. We, nobody here needs a reminder of what we're navigating through. And the unprecedented nature, here I go, <laughs> of the nations on the earth, yeah? Myanmar, right? Israel going into her fourth election in two years. The U.S., ah, ah, ah you know, don't get me started. <laughs> Seriously, all right? But we stand here in the middle, 
What do I mean by that? Well, we just had Purim, and we don't need to remind you the, the lessons of Purim. God hidden, God giving the flick to the enemy's strategies, reversing the curse, so, so many beautiful issues in, in Purim. But Purim comes at the end of the Jewish sacred calendar year. It's the last festival in the year. And Pesach is about a week and a half away, Passover. And that's the beginning of the Jewish sacred calendar, all right? The civil calendar begins in the autumn or in the northern hemisphere in, in September, October with tabernacles. You all know that. But this is the, we're coming into the transition from the end of the sacred year into the beginning of the sacred year. And transitions are always important to mark and pay attention to, especially for the children of God as we seek to navigate in the earth, understanding, seeing what is God doing. And whenever you find yourself in a transition moment, oh, look for God. Look for God. Choose to see God in the mundane things or in the, in the ordinary. Choose to, to believe he is in the, 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 the natural stuff that is surrounding you or in the coincidences that you might, uh, that you might articulate. You know, even this morning, uh, Kim was saying, you know, uh, that Luke's surgery, w surgery wasn't necessary. He could do it by diet. We could sit here and go, oh, that's nice. Or we could choose to see God in that as an answer to prayer and give thanks to the living God who intervenes into the lives of men and transforms our circumstances for his good pleasure, for his glory, and so that we might become children of faith, that we might see and sense God at work in us and around us and learn to live from that perspective. Otherwise, everything is just kind of happening and we live life Passively. Yesterday in the synagogue, they started reading the book of Leviticus. Everybody say, yay. <laughs> so I thought I would take you through Leviticus this morning. <laughs> Do you know, Jewish boys, when they're, being, when they're in, in Cheder, in Jewish school, um, at five years old, they begin studying the Torah. And you know what book they start with? Yeah. And it's not Genesis. It's Leviticus, which is the middle of the Torah. Five books, Leviticus being the middle one. So in that sense, you can begin seeing it's the beating heart of God. Yeah. It's the source from which everything else emanates. And Jewish boys begin reading Leviticus. And you got to, even now, in a post-sacrificial world for the last 2,000 years, they begin studying all the sacrifices. What the heck is that all about? Why would they do that? And the point is, is that the point is not the sacrifices. Even in Jewish thinking today, they've had to have a work around sacrifices. Even though they do not yet, by the grace of God, see Yeshua Jesus as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world, that revelation is coming. When the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, then the partial hardening on the heart of Israel will be removed, and we will see our elder brother revived in an unprecedented way. It's upon us, guys. It's upon us. We're on the threshold. Islam first. Islam first as the penultimate frontier around the land of Israel. And then finally, last but not least, the Jewish people are going to, are going to celebrate Jesus, Yeshua, as their Messiah. In the meantime, they have to have workarounds. <laughs> how come we don't have sacrifice? How do, how do we obey the law if we can't sacrifice, right? So they too have begun to see the beating heart of God's intentions hidden in the sacrificial system. And so they begun, they've learned, they've trained themselves to see God as, as often as there is grace to see him. And so, for instance, in Jewish tradition, there's a blessing for everything. There is. Not just a good meal. If you see a, a beautiful person, there's a blessing for seeing a beautiful person, a beautiful sunset, a beautiful day. Uh, any moment, there are any number of given blessings that are to be recited by a, an observant Jewish Orthodox person in, in a strategy to, to train oneself to see God in the ordinary, to see God in the mundane, to give God praise for the fact that the roof isn't leaking today. And f f some of you don't realize what a, what a miracle that is. Hey, Al. 
I mean, seriously, we were about to get to the point where we were going to we were going to plastic wrap the roof. We've tried so many different strategies on this this silly roof of ours, but it doesn't seem to be leaking today. Praise God. <laughs> but um, the book of Leviticus in Hebrew, I mean, traditionally it's known as as uh, um, Torah Kohenim or the the laws of the priests. But the but the traditional name. Uh, that's the that's the formal religious name. The traditional name of the book of Leviticus is, as in Jewish tradition, the same as every other book. It, it derives from the first word of the book. And the book opens with, and God called to Moses. And so the name of the book in Hebrew is Vayikra, which is the Hebrew for, and he called. Yeah? And so, look, you could, any of you who's awake still, you could probably preach a, sherm, a sermon on the fact that God called. And God called. Come on, that's, that's, that's what we've responded to this morning. We came into his presence. He opened the gates and invited us in. And we responded. The calling of God, that word vaikra, is, a, is, a, is an invitation of intimacy. In, uh, in Isaiah chapter 5, you remember when the, you know, the temple is being shaken and the angels are crying, holy, 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 and the train of God was filling the temple? There's the, the word in there is that the angels called to one another. And it's the same Hebrew word. They, they, they called using the word vikra. And, and, and it's, a, it's a calling of intimacy. You can almost see the angels encouraging one another. Come on. Come on. This is the moment we get to declare how holy God is. And so it got so loud that the foundations shook. Yeah. And, and not unlike this morning, God invited us and we drew near. And the worship got louder, and it got louder, and not because John artificially raised the, the temperature on the house volume or anything like that. It's because, no, because the anointing came, and you sang louder because it deserved to be sung loud. Yeah? This is what happens when God invites. He draws us out of ourselves, out of our reticence, and politeness. Sometimes do you, I know you do, sometimes when we're worshiping, do you sit there and go, gee, you know, if Jesus were really standing up there, would I be sitting here waiting for, wondering what the next verse is because somebody on media hadn't flipped the slide? And that's not Tim. He does a beautiful job, by the way. Do you know, do you know what I'm driving at just here in that little thought? If Jesus were really here in all his glory, where would we be? We'd be on our face. And once we got over that, by his grace, he would say, take courage, and he would stand us on our feet, and we would be giving him everything we've got, the breath of our lungs. And that would translate in it initially probably to volume and then to abject silence that no one would dare transgress. But we wouldn't be uncomfortable because in the silence, we would be hearing God. We would be abiding in him in a way that we've only theologically, you know, tr you know, tripped into now and again. But this we're so familiar with these terms that we've so we're show we're so bereft or poverty stricken in terms of our experience of what they speak of. The rabbis like to teach that 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 word at the beginning of, of, of Leviticus, Vaikra. And he called his invitation. But with an absence of one word, the final, for your sakes, I'll just say A. In Hebrew, it's the Aleph, which is a silent word, a silent letter. In Hebrew, it's a, it's, it's a consonant. It's not a vowel. So it can be confusing. But just simply saying, Vayikra ends in A, doesn't it? In our thinking, right? Vayikra. Okay? You remove that little a. In fact, in the original transcripts of Hebrew that are all handwritten on parchment, that aleph, that final a, is written half the size of all the other letters. And nobody knows why. It's too old. Even the rabbis today don't know why. They come up with a reasoning behind it, but they don't know why it was initiated that way. Why would you write a letter at half size? Remember, when the scribes are transcribing Torah, they are, they are so keen that every jot and tittle is included perfectly. If you, if you, you know, can you imagine? You're halfway through the book of Leviticus copying it, 
and your little son comes in and jumps up on your knee and bumps you, <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden, Jeet. well, it kind of looks like the L is supposed to look. It'll do. People will know. No, you don't get to do that. You have to start over because this is the Word of God. So when an, a letter is half-sized, there's a reason the Holy Spirit whispered it half size. And the rabbis teach it this way, that in the absence of that A at the end, Vayikra becomes Vayikar. Can you see that in your brain? Vayikra, without the final A, becomes Vayikar. And Vayikar doesn't mean, and he called. Vayikar means, and he happened upon. So in other words, the intentional intimate invitation is transformed into an accident. You know, oh, just, oh, I don't know. It just happened. Coincidence. Yeah. And so what I'm going to suggest to you today, this isn't necessarily the rabbinic response, but it's obvious you guys could preach this. God wants to train us to take the coincidental things in our life and begin to see him in them. Yeah? To turn vayikar into vayikra. Vayikra. And so you can take the most mundane thing and begin seeing God. I'm not saying seeing demons under your pew or, or getting a reading from the tea leaves or the way somebody's crossing. You know, the, the foolish Christian superstition that sometimes is prevalent in churches because we're always trying to get ahead of the wave. And No, just surrender. Open your eyes and choose to see God. Choose to see him choose. When I don't understand, what? I will choose him. When I don't understand, I will choose him. I will choose to love him. Perhaps that's the most important moments in our life is when we don't understand. How many people here this morning have a, an, an issue in your life that you really don't fully understand? And, and, and Talia was speaking in part, it's the, it's the shutdown right now. Can't go see our family and our friends and our kids. Can't hop on a plane and go embrace my children. I mean, on one level, I don't understand that. Or I don't like that. But I choose to see God in it. I choose to love God in the midst of it. I choose to rejoice in the midst of the things that I don't understand. Well, that, that's an introduction to what I share. All right, let me let me go to um, I, uh, Leviticus chapter twenty-six. I, just because it, it, it's good that we get into Leviticus this morning, just since I've I've spoken so much about it. But in Leviticus twenty-six is a short little passage at the be at the beginning of the chapter talks about the blessings of obedience, all right? So I just want to want to unpack that just briefly. From verse 3 it says, "If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments so as to carry them out, then I shall give you rains in their season, so that the land will yield its produce and the trees of the field will bear their fruit. Indeed, your threshing will last for you until great gathering." And grape gathering will last until sowing time. In other words, the, the sowers will overtake the reapers. You will thus eat your food to the full and live securely in your land. I shall grant you also peace in the land so that you may lie down with no one making you tremble. I shall also eliminate harmful beasts from the land and no sword will pass through the land. And you will chase your enemies, and they will fall before you by the sword. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred will chase ten thousand. And your enemies will fall before you by the sword. So I will turn toward you and make you fruitful and multiply you. And I will confirm my covenant with you. You will eat the old supply and clear out the old because of the new. Moreover, I will make my dwelling among you, and my soul will not reject you. I will also walk among you and be your God, and, I shall, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt so that you would not be their slaves. And I broke the bars of your yoke, 
and made you walk erect. I love that. Even where you're sitting, sit up straight. I mean, if you want to. And then you can relax again in a minute. God said, I broke the bars of your yoke and made you walk erect. We are the what? We are the upward looking ones. That's what the Greek for man means, at least in part, the upward looking ones. And yet life conspires to cause us to stoop and to be, oh, uh, you know, and, and to be overcome by coincidence and the mundane and the normal and the lack of, in our minds, significance. Yeah. But God would train us not to become bent over with just the mundane normality and repetition of life in a fallen world, but rather to be those who, as ambassadors for Christ, and those who've been reborn and transformed and filled with the Spirit of God, are learning again how to walk erect and to keep our eyes up and to see God wherever we look, that He is at work work and we are ministers of his labor and cooperating with his purpose and bringing glory to his name at first simply by our awareness that God is in this place and I'm not talking about this building I'm talking about Nambor yeah Jesus in Philippians chapter 3 it said he for love, right? He set aside his divinity. Yeah. And became obedient even to death on the cross. So that then God highly exalted him. Do you see that, that maneuver? Jesus left glory and became obedient until he literally died. Then God reverses it raises him up and glorified him at his own right hand where he now intercedes for you and I. If this place in the middle that we find ourselves between Purim and Pesach, halfway through the COVID crisis, and I say that obviously guardedly, because <laughs> who really knows, but I get the sense that we're halfway through. And it feels like you know, the, the trough. Because now the discussion everywhere is, are you going to get vaccinated or, you know, or not? And I'll leave you to figure that out on your own. But in it all, God is good. And he, greater is he in me than he's in the world. Greater is he that is in me than anything that I am required to put into me. And now God is, as we approach, we've come out of Purim. And now we're approaching Pesach. And God is about to reverse the curse. He's about to give the flick. He's about to expose. He's about to turn back some of the well-laid, intricate plans of the enemy. And we need to be on our toes and looking to see. Not just so that we can give praise to God, but so that we can participate in that and encourage one another in, in, the, in the process. Because some of us have bad days now and again. We need someone to come alongside and say, it's not that bad. God's still on the throne. It's going to be okay. Don't, I want to hear that now and again from somebody else. Yeah? And we can, we can speak to one another and strengthen one another's heart. At the end of the Torah reading each year, the Jewish people in the synagogue shout that out. Be strong, be strong, and let us strengthen one another. That normally happens in the September, October season of Rosh Hashanah, but it sure is a good cry to make right now. Be strong, be strong, and let us strengthen one another. Jesus here, by the Holy Spirit, promises that if we walk in the commands of God, several things will result. One is, it will, you'll, you'll prosper. Your threshing will last until the grape harvest, and the grape harvest will last until the sowing time. That's, that's like nuts. And it, but it's not unlike the, the Sunshine Coast. You know, I've got a couple citrus trees in my backyard, and I can't figure out when to prune them. 
because they never stop fruiting. It just, you know, rolls on, you know. But what the Lord here is speaking about is not the consequence of, you know, living for better or worse in a ridiculously humid environment, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a temperate, you know, uh, whatever, tr- subtropical climate that we are in here. It's just, it's just God's goodness blessing the work of our hands and causing us to prosper. Yeah. He says, um, I will give rains in their season. Your threshing floor will prosper. You'll eat food and live securely in your land, and there will be peace. What is your land? Your land is your area of influence, your own home, your family, your workplace, your responsibilities. He will give you peace in your land if you walk in his ways. And I know you guys know what that means, but we'll, we'll talk before I'm done. I'm going to summarize that up. And he says, your enemies, you know, in Hebrew, the word for enemies here, your enemies, is oivechim. And uh, you might have missed it, but, you know, there is a saying in Hebrew, when things aren't going your way, what do you say? Oive. <laughs> That's not exactly this word, but I couldn't help find, hear the play on words here. Oivechem is your enemies. And for me, it sounds like oivechem. It's oive them, all my enemies. Oive. You know, it makes us, oi, what are we going to do? And God says, I will take care of oivechem. <laughs> all the things in your life that make you cry out oive. I will do it. In fact, the language here is very interesting. It says twice that they will fall they will fall by the sword. That, that phrase in Hebrew can be, they will fall on their own sword. So when you walk in the ways of God, when you are obedient, when you align yourself with the character of Jesus, yeah, God promises your doubt is going to fall on its own sword. Fear is going to take its own life. Your lack and want and uncertainty, your lack of wisdom, all of those things are going to be just diving on their own sword. Why? Because God has promised, I will fight for you. Wait on me, and I will fight for you. Walk in my ways, and I will see that your enemies take themselves out. How many times in the Old Covenant do we see that happening? Enemies turning on one another. You wake up in the morning, and they've killed each other. I mean, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? You wake up in the morning, and all of a sudden, your mortgage is paid off. (laughs) Hallelujah! You know? Or the sickness is gone. Or all of a sudden you get a phone call from your estranged son and he says, can we have coffee? And you didn't do anything. All of a sudden he's just changed and he wants to reconcile. Come on, God. The enemy's strategies fall on their own sword and you haven't done anything except what? Align yourself with Jesus. Walked in his ways. Learned obedience. Trained yourself to see God in even the most broken, un- unfamiliar, lack of understanding type circumstances. Yeah. And he's made us walk erect. Uh, John 15. Yeah. We'll end with this, okay? I mean, there's, there's a lot more I'd, I'd like to say. I, I was going to go to 1 Samuel 15. It's just too much, though, for this morning. But let me, let me just summarize 1 Samuel 15 for you because it's important because that's where we sit. 1 Samuel 15 sits between Purim and Pesach. It's the story of Saul's foolishness, right? You remember the story? He's commanded by Samuel to wait until Samuel returns before he sacrifices. In the meantime, he's, he's to go out and defeat the Amalekites and destroy Agag the king and everything that belongs to him. Remember that? And you remember in the story of Purim, Haman is an Agagite. He is a descendant of Agag. And the reason he's alive there to threaten the very existence of the Jewish people and the strategies of God for world redemption so much later than this incident is simply because Saul did not kill Agag. Now, Samuel did. It's a spiritual lesson here. Saul left him alive thinking, I don't know what to shame him or whatever. You know, and for that reason, for disobeying God, Saul lost his place, and so did Jonathan. It's a very sad tale of disobedience that accrues down to the generations in terms of inheritance. Very sad, very sad. But Samuel comes and says, 
what have you done? What's the sound of bleeding I hear in my ears? You remember? Oh, we saved the best to sacrifice. And God said, no, I wanted you to destroy it all. It was time for judgment. And then Samuel says that famous line, right? God desires what? Obedience, which is better than sacrifice. And I think it's this, the, a word from the Holy Spirit for us again this morning. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than any kind of religious list or, or obligation or system that you might follow. But obedience looks different to us than it might have to Saul. All right? Obedience is better than sacrifice. John chapter 15 from about verse 9. Just as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Okay? If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Abide in my love. How? If you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. What are the commandments that Jesus is speaking about that are a prerequisite to abiding in his presence? Well, under, in New Covenant terms, it's draw near. It's love me above all things. It's knock and the door shall be opened. Yeah. It's take up your cross daily. It's all the commands of a loving Savior delivered with an eye to transforming you into a true son or daughter of heaven, one that Jesus himself at the end of the story can stand up and be proud to call his brother, his sister. Why? Because you become a true member of the house. You're a true family member. You've been changed. And in that, he gives you a name that is equivalent to that glorious transformation yeah <laughs> obedience is not about acceptance it's about intimacy Jesus says if you walk in my ways if you abide in my commandments you will abide in me if you love me you will obey yeah. So obviously, in Jesus' mind, obedience is all about intimacy. And that brings us really to the end of the conversation this morning because intimacy is the word that God has left us with halfway through this COVID season, this reset, this whatever God is doing. He left us really holding as the, as the year changed into January last, and now we're moving into it. The word continues to be an invitation, vayikra, God calling us, what, into intimacy, into intimacy. And if you want, that is our obedience. That is our obedience. Make time to answer the intimate call of God, lest you fall into the error of being a religious Christian who simply moves through life and doesn't see God anywhere. Vayikar. Be the one, the man, the woman, who is excited and on tiptoe every day because you've responded to God's invitation, you've obeyed, and you've stepped into his presence. You're learning, you're learning, you're learning. None of us know we're learning what it means to abide in his presence. Was there a word this morning about, or was it one of the songs we sang? You're all around us. It was... It was, oh yeah, it was Wendy's word, I think. Well, uh, but I think it's come several times. It was what? He's in our midst, all around us. What does it mean to abide? It's like being in the deep end of a swimming pool, holding your breath, just enough of it, but it still allows you to sink to the drain. And you're sitting on the bottom. You ever do that? Oh, it's a great place to be, isn't it? abiding in his presence and you just wish you could hold your breath for longer because the world is shut out all the distractions abiding in his presence and then i guess the the, the miracle is that we actually can live 
out of that presence. It's not like you have to jump out of the pool and, gee, can't wait to get back, but you carry that abiding presence of God with you. If we walk in his ways, we will prosper. Our land, our responsibilities will prosper. Our enemies will fall. And we will walk erect and at peace. Thank you, Lord. Father, we pray for just, well, we actually, we pause in gratitude, Lord, because you have made this possible. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us. You've never, you've never, you've never deserted us, Lord God, and you are with us even now. You're sitting right next to us, even right now where we sit. You are intimately uh, with us. You are there, shoulder to shoulder with us. You are in us, you know. Jesus in us is intimacy. We in him, intimacy, obedience. Beautiful. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. Thank you, Lord, that you continue the work of transformation in our lives. Thank you, Lord God, that you open our eyes, Lord God, to see what you are doing in the most ridiculous places, in the most unexpected ways. Lord, may we be a people who see and who are delighting you daily by responding to your invitation in obedience to come closer, to come closer, to knock, to ask, to believe, to dare. Thank you, Lord God, that you bless this house with men and women who will move out into their week looking for opportunities to share that love, to speak of that love, that overflow with that love, that are not compelled by duty, to share the love of God, but are compelled by, by reality and by your presence to just release the message of hope that is bubbling over on our hearts. Lord God, we, we love you. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you for your fellowship with us, for your kindness towards us, and for your strength. And we bless you, Lord. We bless you. And we say amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Now listen. Um, a few things. Yeah, there's soaking this week. This will be the last soak. Uh, after that, we're, we're moving into a season of, um, of Passover and Easter. And after that, I'm going to be teaching Jewish roots for about five weeks. So we like just to keep the things during midweek to a few things at a time. But the last one is, is this week, this uh, Wednesday. Passover is next Saturday at... Um, I think we've, we've, had, we've had it at 6.30. Okay, we'll call it 6.30. I think you've had an email already that said 6 as well. Um, but it's okay if you're on early. We'll call it 6.30, all right? And it'll go for about an hour and a half probably. And um, we're going to do it live stream like we did last, week, last year. And that means Jeannie and I are going to be leading the Passover from here in the, in the studio. And you're welcome to join us online. And in order to help you do that, um, we have at the back, we have uh, some little pamphlets that just are a guide to how to prepare your Passover for you and your family. And we have um, some of the little Passover booklets. In Hebrew, they're called Haggadah, the telling of Passover. And you can take one or two of those per family, and that can guide you through. For those that have um, the ability, we're also emailing it out to you in PDF and a Word format so that you can probably print it out yourself, and that'll give you the best chance of, of gaining the most out of the Passover as we walk through the, 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 the booklet, as we walk through the telling. Um, and you can prepare your Passover for that. So uh, that'll be this Saturday night. Um, this week... We have the, um, well, and next Saturday or next Sunday after church is our AGM, okay? And as leadership and elders, we are really looking forward to this AGM because we are, we're, we're learning to measure church differently. And um, we have some exciting things to share with you and, uh, and bring to the table. Um, so um, that will be for numbers sake. We have to limit it to voting members or church members. And if you're unsure, as you've read the emails about your status at church, you can, you can follow that up with a call to the office, and we'll, we'll double-check our database, and we can upgrade you if you need upgrading or downgrading or whichever grade you want. We'll, we'll, we'll sit you where you want to be. Um, oh, yeah, we haven't taken up the offering. Uh, go to the, is there a slide for Empowered? 
Okay. There is a conference here this week. Uh, the it's it's called Empowered, and pardon me. Oh, oh, from the 28th. Okay. It's it's oh, that's right. It's Sunday. It's Monday week. Just so you guys are aware, we've uh, we've invited a crew in who have done already one empowerment conference, empowering conference. I don't know. Is it empower or empowerment? Empowering, empowered, and it was it was a tremendous success. And we're, they've been looking for a Sunshine Coast venue, and so we've opened our doors, and they're going to run their empowered conference here from Sunday or from Monday week for four days and nights. The nights are open and free. The daytime sessions require payment and registration. But for those of you that are keen and the Lord moves you in that direction, it's going to be a really good week. All right. Um, also, um, again, I, I, I think I've told you this before. I just want to keep keep it in front of you. We are, we've purchased our chairs, right? And the chairs are coming, and they'll be here sometime in May. Um, and we invite you guys uh, to contribute as you are led uh, each to his own chair. <laughs> okay? So if you want to buy your chair, you're welcome. They're all about, they're, they're 100 bucks each for the chairs. They're coming in from Indonesia, and it will enable us to increase our capacity in here to full numbers once we have chairs. Just means you're going to have to wear a mask coming in and out of the building. But who knows what's going to happen by May? Who knows? You know, uh, you know. So we're just kind of go go for the ride, enjoy enjoy the movement, and thank you for being able to contribute to those chairs as well. Anybody that came this morning prepared with your offering and would like to uh, bring that, you can do that before you leave into the blue buckets that are on the side of the stage, and we thank you all for just loving Jesus and letting us worship together. God bless you. Have a great week, everyone. <laughs>